this is my 11th lecture on primitive roots and indices and here we will learn when a non-linear congruence has a solution so what are the condition necessary and sufficient condition so let us write a statement now we have this theorem which actually explain the solubility criteria for the non-linear uh, congruences we can see that let n be an integer possessing a primitive root we have discussed this earlier that whenever n is either 2 4 p to the power k or twice of p to the power k whenever p is odd prime only for these integer it is possible to find a primitive root so considering that n is an integer which have a primitive root and we consider an integer a whose gcd with n is equal to 1 then the congress x to the power k congruent to a mod n has a solution if and only if this congress is satisfied so since this condition is if and only if this will give us necessary and sufficient criteria and where d is the gcd of k and phi n d is the one which we are taking in the uh, uh, denominator form so if it has a solution then there are exactly d solutions modulo n first let's look quickly uh, the proof about this we want to solve this congress x to the power k congruent to a mod n and we are saying that this has a solution if and only if this congress is hold so taking indices on both side taking indices we get the congruence a raised to power phi n by d this is congruent to 1 mod n this is same as exponent will come in the front and then we have index of a and we have seen in the previous example that it doesn't matter which primitive root we have selected so both will give the same result and then we have index of 1 index of 1 is congruent to 0 mod phi of n so now from here we can simply say the above hold if and only if d divide indices of a because we can simply see that here we have a phi n term and also we have phi n so phi n is congruent to phi n so this should make sense otherwise uh, this will be a fractional term this will not be an integral so this will make sense if and only if d by indices of a is divisible and so this becomes the necessary condition for us that x raised to power k this is congruent to a mod n is solvable and to justify this last remark from this previous that why this conclusion will hold we can see this uh, one more remark here which will follow us this quickly we can see that if you want to solve x to the power k congruent to a mod n whenever your k is greater than or equal to 2 so and we know that if this has some prim uh, n has some primitive root okay and we may select that the gcd of a and n has to be equal to 1 so by the definition of the indices we could have used this like k times index of x this is congruent to index of a and then we have mod of phi n now this look like as a linear congruent okay to justify that this is look like as a linear congress we can see that this is like a coefficient capital a this is like a variable and then we have something on the right hand side mod again some some thing like we can say a capital c now linear congress is solvable whenever the gcd of the these two integers should divide this b okay and let me call the gcd as d so d should divide b so in the same way if i apply those properties here and if i just simply say let d this is the gcd of k and phi n because you can see that the gcd of k and phi n should divide this index so whenever d divides indices of a then star is solvable so star is a solvable otherwise it is not solvable so, or and whenever d does not divide index of a then star this is not solvable so we can now compare what we have shown in the previous theorem we have shown that d divides index of a and we are trying to solve this case so if we have already proved that d divides index of a that means that x to the power a con x to the power k congruent to a mod n is solvable and this is why this becomes the condition we started from this condition this allowed us to prove this condition and this is the condition we require for the solvability of our non-linear congress 
we can look this in an example so here i want to just check that x cube congruent to 4 mod 13 is solvable or not so what is the condition x raised to power k congruent to a mod n this is solvable if and only if we were taking a raised to power phi n by d that is congruent to 1 mod n this is the condition and what is the d d this is the gcd of k and phi n now just compare the things here we can see k is 3 k is the exponent and then a is 4 of course the gcd of 4 and 13 is 1 that is the condition we require and then we also need to calculate what is d d is the gcd of k k is 3 phi n that is phi 13 which is 12 which is 3 so gcd we got as 3 and so we can simply say a raised to power phi n phi n that is 12 by 3 this should be congruent to 1 mod n this should be the congruent that should be set if this is satisfying we can see a is 4 4 to the power 4 4 to the power 4 this you can see 4 square into 4 square 4 square is 16 into 16 16 into 16 you can see that it is 256 256 is further congruent to 9 which is not congruent to 1 mod 13 so if this is not satisfying this congruence the non-linear congruence that we are trying to solve this is not solvable we can directly uh, look at the condition or the solvability first and we can conclude if some congress satisfy these conditions then we can say that it is solvable and we can take the use of the indices as explained in my last video we can find the solution of the uh, that particular non-linear congress so we can try one more problem as we can see x cube which is congruent to 5 mod 13 so here we can see that a is 5 n is 13 and k is 3 so phi n that is 12 and we can calculate d d is the gcd of k and phi n so these two values are gcd of 3 and 12 so the gcd is 3 so we require a to the power phi n by d that is congruent to 1 mod n and if this is true so let's see 5 to the power phi n value is 12 and gcd is 3 so 5 to the power 4 this turn out to be 625 625 is congruent to 1 mod 13 so this is solvable as we this condition is satisfied now if it is solvable now to solve to solve star i am using the concept of indices so use indices so when i use indices what i'll do is i'll take indices on both sides so you'll have three times index of x this is congruent to index of 5 and then you can take with respect to mod phi 13 that is 12 so index of x again i told you you can do it with respect to any primitive root let me to take 2 as a primitive root so here index of x this is a variable keep this as as it is this is 3 index of 5 with respect to 2 is 9 this you can see in my previous videos list or you can calculate this at this moment so that means index of 5 means what is index of 5 it appear in the power of 2 to the power 9 mod 13 this is what it means index of 5 is 9 okay so that's what i've written here now cancel uh, 3 on all sides so this will become index of x this is congruent to 3 mod 4 now again we need to check what are the possibility values for index of x that is 3 and again you need to refer to the table that i've done in my previous uh, video so you can see that this is possible as 3 7 or 11 and correspondingly i can find excess congruent to 7 8 and 11 mod 13 this will also allow us to find that there are d incongruent solutions modulo 13 d uh, was the gcd that we have calculated and if the solution exists, we can find D incongruent solutions. So the value for D is 3 and we have found 3 incongruent solutions.